Once again, you know who it is. It's Rick, and you see who's featured down here is none other than Reggie Wright Jr. You know, you see him all over the place on YouTube. Hey, he's making an appearance here as usual. How you doing today, Reggie? Respect, Rick. How you doing today, brother? I'm doing good. Now, I was going to say um, we'll dive or I'll dive into some of the things that people seem to hear, like to hear about Tupac. Being familiar or cool with certain artists, Back then, what do you say the relationship between Ice Cube and Tupac was? Was it was it cordial at the end or not? Okay, to be honest, when uh, Pac was on death row, y'all got to remember the time periods from October of 95 until his death of uh, September of uh, 96. I don't recall Ice Cube being around us that much because you got to remember his relationship was mainly with Drake. And Dre kind of fizzled away about uh, March of 96. And so uh, Q wasn't around, uh, to be honest, uh, during that time. He was around a little bit pre death row, you know, during the uh, uh, murder was the case, because there's no natural born killer and all of that. Right. But Pac, but we all know, and people that are really deep into this really know that Pac always had a problem with Q because he felt that he took the saying buy down from him. That's what I was going to ask you about. Oh, okay, okay. That's why you led into the question. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, him believing that, I don't, I will be honest, I don't believe that. I believe that's a West Coast term. Right. And uh, a lot of people say that. That's just like saying, uh, you know, blood upon roof. You get mad somebody say that on a record. <laughs> You'd be like, damn, nigga, everybody out there, they say that. Right. You know, and so, that's my opinion. A lot of people are going, going to get mad for me speaking against uh, or saying that about Park, but that was my opinion. Okay. But that was Park's, that was Park's belief as well, though, that uh, Q stole the term by down from him. Okay. Now, this rolls into it, too, and this is this is more of a situation after death. In the movie Friday, after next, okay. you know how Q had... Uh, oh, yeah, I hate that. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. <laughs> he let Terry Crews do that. Yeah, jacking off to the music or playing with himself or yeah. any way that he was playing with himself. Yeah. You know, he tapped at me. He made a funny character or whatever. I don't know if it was homage or what. Uh, you know, go name uh, his boy Mark Epps, Reggie Wright, in, in that show. Mm. Uh, so, you know, Q did little things and stuff like that. But Q also helped during my era uh, while she was in jail. He, he did a, a song for... A uh, gang related, or, or was it Gridlock? Uh, on one of on one of the soundtracks, but that was because it was being distributed by Priority. But he looked out and did that. Right. Uh, I remember a couple of times he needed some studio time, and he called and uh, and the show was like, "Red, you can if you want to let the nigga in, you can. You know, if you gonna stay over and, and, and stay at the studio." And so, Cube was cool. He was cool, but. He had his own thing going. He yeah. was with a different distributor. Uh, yeah, I took a little offense to that. When I saw that, I was like, why well, you got to let that nigga be like he, you know, masturbating or, or, or you know. But, I, 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 you know, he got the song approved. The money got placed in the, the song got placed in the music. I don't know. A placement in a movie like that makes a lot of money for Tupac and, and, and the state. And, you know, therefore probably got a little bit. Okay. So that helped a little bit. Hmm. And, you know, to, to get the song placed in the uh, in the movie. Right. So so people did eat, but, yeah, he did allow Terry Crews to, to look like he was, uh, you know. But tell me this, though, because you, know, you just pulled my phone to someone when you said he used your, like your name in for Mike Epson. And, like, did, did you get some credit going that way because, you know, he did it yeah, like man. that? yeah. I just like Mike Tyson. Y'all hear Mike Tyson arguing right now with Hulu. Yup, right. The people that did that. Mm -hmm. Say, man, they can use your name and stuff. That's why Suge in jail now, in prison now, because he was mad because, you know, they were putting him in the NWA movie and, and using this, you know, likeless, likelessness in there. Right. Unfortunately, you can do movies and do stuff for people that have a little notoriety without giving them credit for it. Mm. As you don't like it, but that's when it becomes a true story versus uh, 
fictional or uh, uh, what they call it un uh, un uh, unauthorized movie or or or, or using. So no, but to say it to make a long story short, hell no, and and not one step from that. Okay, now tell me this. Since, since uh, this is another uh, direction with this question, how much did he just use the name, or was he trying to use certain things throughout the movie, like no, how he no, was no. acting? If he would have had a cube name as right, Reggie Wright, then I might have say that. But I wasn't ever no considered no comedian, or or like like the part Mike Epps uh, played. Uh, but it, you know, it definitely was because of the relationship in '97, '98, or whatever that we had. You know, right? That he used the name, but he did this. It wasn't a diss. No, this boy, they ended up becoming tight in the movie. So who knows? Okay. Who knows? Right. I can't say. Now this other one, I done heard this in the past, and it, to me, it never got answered by anybody that can you know vet it to be real or not. I done heard an old interview with um. Master P, where he said, "Yeah, I used to, I used to open up shows with Tupac." Now, when he says that, does he mean prior, or does he mean when uh, Tupac was on death row? Because I'll never remember hearing anything like that. Only time I can say definitely why he was on death row was one time. Okay. I'm not for sure, but as we know, you have local local artists, and we did perform in New, in New Orleans. Uh, in like January of 1996, uh, we went to Cleveland, Ohio, and then we went to uh, New Orleans and performed at the Superdome. A lot of the local promoters, what they call local promoters, uh, had their artists come and perform at those shows at the beginning. You know, the artists don't know. They just know there's a lot of shit going on at 8 o'clock. Right. And they don't generally want to come on the show until like 9, 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Hmm. And so... He could have performed there. All I remember about P at that time is we went to his nightclub. And I don't think it was his club, but he was he was promoting a nightclub there. And uh, and we went there. He paid Punk, I think, like ten or fifteen thousand dollars to uh, uh, ten or fifteen thousand dollars to uh, come to the club. You know, the after party. We went to the club, went in there. They had some crystal, some chicken wings and stuff. We went in there. Tupac got on the mic and said, hey, you know, it's Tupac, welcome to this club and all of that. And we left. Because mm. he was tired after the concert. Right. He probably had already had his female for the night or whatever. I don't know. But I, I know he went there no longer than 30 minutes, and he got like a $58,000 fee. That was the only time that I remember dealing with uh, um, Master P while Tupac was alive. Okay. Now another one, I got. I actually got one of the commercials to this particular person on my channel. It ain't monetized because I don't own it or anything like that. But how was Ricky Harris associated with Death Row? Comedian, Long Beach boy, Snoop and their homeboy, uh, funny guy, comedian. But he was a Long Beach dude that came around. You know, the Long Beach people. Shout out, rest, rest in peace, Ricky Harris. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, Ricky Harris was funny, um, cool dude. And mainly because he, he grew up in um, Long Beach, went to Long Beach Poly with all of them. Okay. A little older, a little older than uh, Snoop and them. But, you know, from that Long Beach connection. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, because... Yeah, and he was, and he was, a, he was an up-and-coming uh, comedian like T.K. Kirkland and A.J. Johnson and uh, Lachelle and, uh, you know, people like that that was blowing up at the time from the Compton, Long Beach, L.A. area. Right. That was working as... The scenes. Now I was wondering, he, he wasn't signed in any capacity, was he? No, no, no. He just probably got an appearance fee or whatever. But like I said, he had a great relationship with Lobie Stars. Okay. And, uh, and he was funny. He was up and coming. You know, TK, TK, uh, Kirkland, AJ Johnson, the dude named Greg. I can't think of Greg's last name. Uh, but a lot of them were, it was this club in Compton called the Indigo Club. Well, anybody on the West Coast that know about the Indigo Club used to be real popular uh, every Monday night. And that's where a lot of comedians came in and performed. And Ricky was one of the trailblazers in that. He was T.K. T.K. was the two big ones at the time. Mm. Yeah, because it always made me wonder, because, you know, um, didn't Death Row have some, some music on the soundtrack for Poetic Justice? No. 
Yeah, I just was thinking was it a connection because you know Ricky Harris being in uh, Poetic Justice, you know when he was a uh, with old girl Pac's girl in the movie at the beginning with his kid, and you know they got in a tussle. That's what made me think like, is it? Connected? I didn't even realize. I didn't even realize that was Ricky, but yep. no, it was just probably like I said, he was an upcoming comedian at the time, and that's what comedians want to do. That's how you got Mr. hanging with Mr. Cooper and all of them. They were just hot. Out in LA, and then they just got a little job. That was their goal to get a get a sitcom, right? Try to get a get a, a sitcom. Now that was the way. I can't that was remember. The way they got their breaks. I can't remember if it was before or after, but then Dre got in an altercation with was it D Burns or whatever that female D, D, D Burns. Yeah, she uh, it was something on BET where she showed up to his house to say something, and. Uh, he allegedly slapped her. He had to do some time behind that, and he was placed on house arrest for that. But, yeah. I, but I'm wondering, because Ricky Harris was, ended up marrying her, so it's like, how can he be associated if, you know, they had that kind of situation, but it depended on what was it before or afterwards, you know, that's... I didn't know, I didn't even know Dre ended up marrying D.D. Barnes, but yeah, uh... Harris, and Ricky Harris did. Yeah, Ricky Harris, that's yeah, what I'm talking about. Yeah. Tied out, but... Those yep. that I don't know what we're talking about. Right. They do the play then the video cut out. Uh but um I didn't know that. I don't think that. Uh, to be accurate. Mm. Because D Wars is mainly a Washington girl. She was from DC. Well that's man in the world that was from D C. Mm. Uh but anyway, yeah. Right. Uh, I'm, I can't speak on that, but okay. you know, he slapped her, uh, for whatever reason. But he called the case, did his time and, and I think he just apologized, so yeah. Okay, now another one where, you know, you don't know the timeline, so you, you try to figure it out. Now, the movie Gridlock, Pac was in. Which came first, the movie Gridlock or I Ain't Mad At You? Because when I say that, because that Bo Keen Woodbine was in both of those. He was in Gridlock and he was also in I Ain't Mad At You. I'm sure that's where the relationship uh, developed from, because also Kubo D and Pac was supposed to have been doing something. Mm. I think that is something that was done by them. Because you remember, he was a gay related. Right. Uh, cool D. But all of them was done, like I said, within an 11 month period. It probably didn't really start until like March, to be honest, March of 96. So, really, a six month period. Those two movies were shot. And uh, yeah, uh, so that's when I ain't, mad, I ain't Mad at You was done. And I was done towards like June, June of 96. So it was done a little later. Because, you know, Punk album came out February the uh, 13th, 96. But I ain't mad at you. It was one of the later videos that was done on that particular album. Now, this is one that I think a lot of young people... Uh, let me just tell you that Punk didn't like that video. He didn't? He, he didn't care for that video at all. Like, yeah. like in what ways did he not like it? Like, what was the uh, It's just the dead, the dead things. I, I don't know. It's just He didn't feel that particular video. Mm. Just like he didn't feel, or feel a couple of... Uh, how do you want it? It's like three or four different how you do do you want it versions. There's a live performance version and uh, you know, of course the ones with the three different sets of strippers or, or the three sets of, you know, clean version, halfway dirty version and the completely dirty version. But uh, I think we did like four or five videos on how do you want it. Now that's what I was going to say too because I know uh, people think of it like people forget Lisa Ray was actually in uh that toss it up, toss it up. before she toss ever it made it to Players Club. Correct. Hmm. And she got made big wrong. That was her first major role. Hmm. Was toss it up. Hmm. Now this is what, like I said, uh, you know, youngsters probably they don't understand the concept, but you know, people always like, oh, Jay Z had has Club Forty Forty, but before Club Forty Forty, it was Club Six Six Two. What was the concept Correct. of having, you know, like let's create this club, you know? In its purpose, what it what it'll do for you know? Just to somewhere to party in Vegas. Vegas was a hot spot. Right. Suge has some connections because uh, you know that's where Suge grew up at. Well, not grew up, but his college career. He was uh, playing football, and you know, you know that that eighteen, nineteen, that nineteen, that twenty three year old person kind of molds you mm. to where you gonna be. Right. And he was he was in Vegas, and. Uh, he ran a nightclub out there in Vegas for one of his alumni that UNLV liked that atmosphere. He had the he had the acts. He could bring an act in. His plan was eventually bring different acts there, you know, on fight nights 
on big nights. Right. Not to uh, have the club every night open, because they didn't. But on certain nights, just to have a spot where you can bring, uh, bring big acts in and, uh, and perform, you know, and, and perform. But it was just something that he wanted. It's just another entity under him, uh, you know, to have and to do in Vegas. And you know the mafia didn't let you when you blacks. He probably was one of the only blacks that was in the process about to own something out there like that. No, I was gonna say it makes sense what you said. Uh, I seen in one of your other videos where um, you said uh, around that time a lot of artists, rap artists, weren't selling out arenas. So to come to a club and oh. actually be able to see that person, that that's another way to you know generate revenue. And yeah, 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 yeah. And like I said, it was rarity to get a arena, you know, like now, you have an arena performance in a, you know, in a town every week. Right. You know, uh, not in every, not every arena is an all there, but, you know, Kanye's performance somewhere, Drake's performance somewhere, Usher performance somewhere. But back then, you had to have about five rap acts, and, you know, and they had to be on tour to get into an arena. It was like, if you had, uh, you know, if you as an artist had more than two or three performers a year in an arena, you were lucky. Mm. And you probably did that with four or five acts. But to go and do it at a nightclub, shit, they book you out. they give you a nightclub and give you ten, fifteen thousand dollars every week. You know, you could have booked up. And that's how it was going down. Mm. But people don't understand that they don't get that. I don't know why, but, you know, that's how it was back in the 90s. Now I'm going to ask you some questions. You know, from around... In the '90s, that you would, I think you would give a, a different perspective on where people see it. Um, some things that happened in LA, or in one probably up to now. Back in the OJ time, when that was going on, when when it was that car chase, a lot of people don't know that wasn't OJ's Bronco. That was AC Collins' Bronco that looked like OJ's. I didn't know that. I oh, you did. OJ and AC was just driving it. Mm -mm. I didn't know that. I always thought that was OJ's Bronco. Okay. But that might make sense right. because most people don't know where OJ was trying to go to was Mexico. Okay. He was trying to get the hell out of here. Mm. And then they caught him on the fire. And so then that's when they chased him back. Yeah. But OJ, OJ knew that they was coming for him. Mm. And OJ was trying to get, get out of here, go to Mexico and regroup. Mm. Uh, I, shit, he had a gun to his head. Mm. I really think OJ was going to commit suicide. Mm. OJ the whole time he had a gun to his head. Uh, was threatened to commit suicide if the police went back off. Mm. Yeah, because I remember that came over to the airways. That was everywhere. It's just showing that slow police oh, yeah. chase. Yeah, that was, that was some crazy time. The mm. uh, only reason, uh, you know, OJ said he wanted to do was to get back to his mama and say bye to his mama one last time mm. with a gun to his head the whole time. Now, I don't know if you covered in, um, in any of your newer videos, but I would say like this, like far as like rappers that's probably from out of town that that come to the city. Man, I've been telling y'all since the Super Bowl. I warned everybody on the live stream. I was like, y'all be careful, man. You all are towners. Be careful. It's crazy out here. This shit is back like the the late nineties, early two thousands when people were getting wrapped, robbed, and laid down. The youngsters, the PPE loans is over. Right. And the EDD scams is over. Y'all better, y'all better be careful. These youngsters are hungry. Mm. They are robbing people again for the Cuban link chains and they watch us like crazy. I've been, I, you know, Ice Key, Ice T get the credit for it. But trust me, Reggie was trying to warn everybody way before Super Bowl that this was going on and we was reverting back to the 90s. Mm. Because in the late 90s, I can tell y'all so many people that got laid down and robbed from Shaq to Jay-Z to your boy from the Onyx to, uh, man, everybody. And it mainly was going to no recording studios mm. and robbing them and tying them up in the recording studios. Mm. But would uh, you say a yeah. uh, 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 a robber moves different than a, a murderer? Oh, man, a murderer is, is the ultimate. That's when you graduate to ultimate. A robber is, is bad. It's bad. I don't look as bad. I don't think... You put a gun on somebody's face, 
you know, 10 or 12 years, in my opinion, doesn't know if you get caught for murder, I think it's game over. Uh, you know, if you just out killing people for no reason, mm. it's game over. Mm. Uh, robbers, I don't know. I just think it's because people are put in situations where they're just trying to pay their bill or, or, or get that, that pressure from mama, daddy, or girlfriend off their, off their back. So I have a little bit more compassion for a robber over a murderer, but they're both wrong. You're right. I was just saying, so, you know, you know, if you look at it from like a, a law enforcement uh, way, like a robber is just, he's just trying to take and get out of there versus, you know, if someone's coming to do a hit, they're going to go all means. Oh, yeah, I agree. Take. I agree there. Right. Well, I'm not saying, and that's why I said the sentence. I mean, I, you can't just let them go. Right. You just can't say, okay, don't do that no more. You can't do that. You got to take a little bit of their freedom away from them. Hmm. But do we take a lifetime of a freedom away from them? I don't agree. Hmm. Or a lifetime. But you got to make a, you got to make yourself man. And I'm going to miss all my 20s, all my 30s for doing that. Uh, you got to make them think, in my opinion. Yeah. So you think... It'd be better that they had a lot of security if they wanted to move in certain areas to to go eat or or go kicking in certain areas. It'd be better to have security versus just being out on your lonely. That'd be smart, but why you gotta move like that? Why you gotta think about it? Why you gotta be sitting up in a, in a, a, a chicken joint if we talk about P and B? Right. You know, with with, with Cuban links on your neck. Mm. Why, why you got to be moving like that? I can see if you're going to church and <laughs> going to a concert or going somewhere nice, you know, an upscale restaurant or something like that. Then, yeah, yeah, okay. But just to be hanging out daily, I don't think you should have to move like that. But unfortunately, once you get to a certain status, I do think you got to go ahead and help. I believe in homeboys being around. I'm not one for big on, on police security and then all of that hanging with you. Right. But I believe you, you got to have three. To, I love how LeBron James did this old boy. Where he got four, four niggas in his life that, that'll do anything for him, I bet. Mm. You know? Yeah. And I think that you should have, you get money like, you know, on that status. You got to have like four niggas that you grew up with. Not that you just met. That 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 you trust, that you uh, went through the trenches with, I say be in the sandbox with, that you take care of. Mm. Can't take care of everybody, but I get four niggas, these my niggas, mm. I'm going to look out for you. That's how I believe. That's how I would do it if I ever struck gold. Mm. Now, do you believe well, it, it's more so like how, I, I, I remember seeing a, uh, an interview with Mike Tyson, and they were talking to him about um, Mayweather, and he said Mayweather can't take his kids to school by itself. You know, he got to have somebody there. He's not like Muhammad Ali where the people love him, you know. I don't think the people just like Mayweather like that. I just think the people know because he's so flashy. Okay. Look what Mayweather doing. You go look at this Instagram right now. I bet you got a picture up there with a bag full of money <laughs> talking about it. Okay. He always bragging about taking a bitch that he just went to the, to the mall and spending $100,000 on him. Mm. So you put yourself out there like that, right? Then people will be like, "Okay, you don't value your jewelry or your money or, or whatever." So I need this right now. <laughs> Let me hold it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's like you said. That's the difference now versus you know, like back in the either Mike Tyson days or Muhammad Ali days. It was, it was for more for the people. It was like you knew he had money, but he wasn't flashing it like that. So more flash. Yeah, but Mike Mike took care of four dudes. It was a dude named Reggie and. A couple other dudes. I remember when they did their deal with MGM. Mm. They all broke out their brand new Azure or Bentleys. Mm. They bought four Azure Bentleys for him and his four boy, him and his three boys. Mm. So Mike, Mike, I'm not saying he tried to take care of everybody and was splashy like that, but Mike used to close down malls. Mm. He don't went into the store and closed down malls and, and, and shopped and bought all that stuff. Mm. I remember when his kid was born, when the, the chick said she was pregnant. I only think she ended up having the baby. Mm. And he went and bought her all type of baby clothes and all that stuff. And I don't even think she ended up having the baby. So, you know, people do stuff like that, unfortunately. Mm. Uh, but I get what he's saying about 
being a monk. But, you know, Ali and them didn't, they didn't floss their money. They didn't have the, they didn't make the bag that uh, the Mayweather and Tyson made. That's they didn't true. get that bag. Mm. So, of course, you're not going to flash and make that if you ain't got that bag. Right. Man. No brother got a different type of bag. Four, Four seven. seven.